You need protein, you need carbohydrates, you need healthy fats, which you can also get from sources of protein. You need to remain hydrated. Carbohydrates also come in the form of fruit. Granny Smith's are the most elite apples. If you think anything otherwise, you're an imbecile. Now fruits do contain sugars, but trust me, we are yet to find someone who's obese or in a poor bit of health because they eat too much fruit. Fruits are amazing because they're very easy to snack on through the day. If you saw me going about town and snacking on a pepper, you'd think I was insane. People will tell you you need probiotics, but if you consume enough fiber, you get prebiotics. Your gut microbiome feed on that, so you don't need this shit. Tastes like being a kid. Now here's a quick lesson. You have excess adiposity. You can be too fat. That's one pillar of health. You have food quality. That's a pillar of health. Then we have exercise. And your cardiovascular health and your level of fitness is a pillar of health. Excess adiposity, bad for your health. Even if you don't get people exercising more and you don't get them to eat better, if you reduce the amount of excess body fat, you'll make them healthier. However, from the same argument, if you improve the food quality in someone's life, unprocessed whole foods are very difficult to overeat compared to processed foods. So when you get people to eat healthier, they lose fat and they'll see health markers from both of these working simultaneously. That means at the same time, if you're from Essex. Even if you don't get someone to eat better, and even if someone doesn't lose fat, getting someone fitter will also improve their health markers. But ultimately, we want to do all three at the same time. But we need to appreciate the nuance, that when we are telling people to just be in a calorie deficit, we are still trying to make them healthier, even when we don't discuss micronutrients and fiber. This is a separate discussion altogether. Now, a lot of you seem to be very confused because you've just arrived here. Maybe you're one of the new followers. This is what I'm saying. If this is your diet, this is fine. If this is your diet, sometimes you might be a bit sick of meat. Swapping that for that is not perfect, but it's fine. Because you might prefer having that than a chicken breast before doing a very strenuous one hour workout. Also having that instead of chicken and rice could put you in a calorie deficit, which could be one of the pillars of health you're improving. Having this before you eat this is fine. However, if you have this, then all of this, then you happen to have one of these before bed, it's also fine. But if you're consuming that, and this is improving, and this is improving, but that isn't, we need a calorie deficit. So we must come up with a suitable reduction. And if I remove this, if we reduce this, we're jeopardizing fiber and nutrients. So it makes sense, but maybe we reduce this. Maybe just once every other day, right? Because looking at you, you don't need cereal every day. But just because removing this makes everything better, it doesn't make this bad. It doesn't make this bad. It doesn't make this bad. We cannot synthesize the nutrients we need without eating it and putting it in our mouth. It's our responsibility to get the most nutrition we can into our diet because it'll make us feel better. People that feel better exercise more. People that feel better are more inclined to continue with their weight loss journey. So when I'm saying you can eat cereal, I'm not saying you just eat cereal. When I'm saying you can have a protein bar, I'm not saying you just eat protein bars. And when I say Coke Zero doesn't have enough aspartame to kill you, it's looking at the big picture. Understanding nutrition's role in health needs nuance, because I've worked with thousands of overweight people, and if these are the only options available to them, they do well for about two weeks. 